episode of Travelogue, we head to the outskirts of the ancient city of Luoyang. We come face to face with the giants of the spectacular Longmen Grottoes, stroll through the gardens of China's first official Buddhist temple, and get a taste of the delicious and elaborate Luoyang Water Banquet. in the ancient city of Luoyang, which is a haven of history. Now, there's plenty of Chinese culture to be learned about inside the city, but further afield, there's also so much to see. And today, we're going to take you to the cradle of Chinese Buddhism. Hi, I'm Katrina Yu, and welcome to Travelogue. But first, let's start out in the iconic and spectacular Longman Grottoes. The Longmen Grottoes are situated about 12 kilometers southeast of Luoyang city center. It's an hour-long bus ride, but the area also has its own train station. A 15-minute train journey will take you to the grottoes, which occupy a one-kilometer stretch facing the Yi River. Okay, so here at the entrance of the Longman Grottoes, I've got my ticket with a very handy map on it, and they provide audio guides, which is really useful because there's lots of information to take in. But if you're more like me and you prefer a bit more of a one-to-one -one experience, you can hire your very own personal guide. Hi, I'm Hi, Katrina. Hi, I'm Lily. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lily. Yeah. I yeah. see you come from the tourist center. Yeah, yeah the tourist center, they can provide the hot water, newspaper, umbrella. The Longman Grottoes are considered one of the finest examples of Chinese Buddhist art in the country and were inscribed on the World Heritage List in the year 2000. There are more than 2,000 caves altogether. The three Binyang Caves were built around 1,500 years ago. Oh, they're yeah. beautiful! Yeah. According to the history book, Binyang Cave, they were built by the Emperor Xiao Wen of Wei Dynasty. Mm. He used 24 years to build a sculpture for his father and mother to pray. This one here in particular? Yeah, for the uh, labor, about 800,000 of labor to eight, the eight, craft. 800,000 for, for one cave Only or for, for the whole? For one cave. For yeah, one cave. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I like this cave in particular because it has a very significant story attached to it. It was built by Emperor Xiao Wen, and during the Wei Dynasty, there was a particular tradition. Once the emperor is named as the next leader of the country, they would then execute the mother, and he was named at the age of three as the next emperor. This was to prevent the mother from having too much power over her young son. So when you look at this cave and you look at the happy, smiling faces, you feel the devotion that the emperor must have had to his parents and to his mother, even though he lost her at such a young age. The statues in the Longman Grottoes were built mainly during the Northern Wei and Tang dynasties, and the differences between the periods can be seen in the statues themselves. Those sculpted during the rule of the Northern Wei, 300 to 500 AD, tend to appear livelier in expression, more gentle and delicate, while the statues built around 300 years later during the Tang Dynasty reflect the ideal of beauty in that time, a fuller figure with round face and broad shoulders. You know, what I really think is cool about this place is that you can come up and close and pretty much touch history. Now, when Lily was telling me about the men who would spend half their lives doing it, I just Imagine these men every single day waking up and with a little hammer and chisel very carefully making these little marks. You can still see that in little details today. It really is an amazing thing. So um, this one we call the 10,000 Buddha cave. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, because they have 15,000 small Buddha on both walls, only 4 centimeters like this. Oh, right. When I saw the, the patterns in the walls, actually, I just thought they were normal patterns. I didn't realize they're tiny Buddhas. Yeah, tiny yeah. Buddha. Yeah. The 10,000 Buddha, or one four cave, was built in 680 AD under the patronage of Empress Wu Zetian and her family. Despite the name, there are actually more than 15,000 Buddha images sculpted here, reflecting the prosperity and power of the Tang period. Wu Zetian was the only female emperor in Chinese history 
and she was also a devotee of Buddhism, and she commissioned this cave to be constructed under the supervision of two other women, a court official named Yao Shen Biao and a nun, Zhi Yun. During the Tang Dynasty, women were given unparalleled status and influence, and it's perhaps the only period in ancient China where three females could have spearheaded such an elaborate and expensive project. But no amount of grandeur can save these caves from the passing of time, and preservation initiatives are underway to help protect them from erosion and water damage. But the advancing years have done some good, and now the grottoes are here for everyone to enjoy, whereas they were once only accessible to the rich and powerful. Lily, I understand that this was all built on a cliff before. Was it very hard to get to this area? Uh, the transportation is very convenient. Oh, yeah. So you can go exactly on the road. Like oh, butterfly. right. Butterflies are little bow ties. Yes, <laughs> it, it actually it's the two to connect the stone. Uh, they built the Qing Dynasty. Oh, so they actually built a road especially for the grottoes yeah, here. Yeah, they want to protect the bank. Wow. So this one looks stone. These may look like steps, and they are, but they feel more like a red carpet because they lead us to this. The star of the Longman Grotto, Sengxian, or Ancestor Worshipping Temple. This monumental shrine is the largest of the grottos on the West Hill. It's more than 30 meters wide and features 17 meters tall figures flanking the central Virakana Buddha. It was again built for Wu Zetian, who is said to have donated a massive amount of her own money to fund its construction, prompting other aristocrats to do the same. The face of the Virakana Buddha has been called the Chinese Mona Lisa because of its artistic beauty, meticulously crafted with a tranquil and dignified expression. It's even rumored that the face of the Varukana was modeled on Wu Zetian and acclaimed beauty herself. Oh, it's really hard to describe the feeling of being this place. It's completely overwhelming and I'm sure no amount of camera work will do it justice. Being here in the presence of these giants, these statues, whether you're Buddhist or not, you can't help but feel that you're in the presence of something sacred, of something powerful. And you know what else? What I love is the look of each of these eyes. They're either serene or like over here, they're fierce. But they each seem to pose every visitor to the Longman Grotto the question. Even a challenge. Who are you and why have you come? And I'm sure the answer for each and every individual who comes face to face with these giants will be completely different. My visit to Longman Grotto has been an unforgettable encounter with history, and I'm sure it will be for you, too. But there's still plenty more to see in this area, such as the garden celebrating the life and work of Bai Juyi. He was a great Tang Dynasty official and poet, and many of his works are still popular today. Bai Juyi's grave and plaques recounting his best-known poetry can be found here, as well as some peace and quiet, perfect for enjoying a relaxing afternoon. So we saw the Lawman Grottoes by day, but we've come back here on a really nice summer evening. Now it's really worth coming back here on a Friday or Saturday night because you'll be able to then see the Longman Grottoes in a completely different light. Literally. From April to October, between 7.30 and 11 in the evening, visitors can take in a glittering view of the Longman Grottoes blanketed in colorful lights. I think the intricately designed illumination adds to the mystery and intrigue of the place. And not only that, it's also quite romantic. Locals and tourists alike flock to the riverbank to enjoy a chilled out evening with family and friends. And here's a tip, bring a camera with a decent night setting because you'll definitely want to use it. In this 
next episode of Travelogue, we head to the outskirts of the ancient city of Luoyang. We come face to face with the giants of the spectacular Longmen Grottoes, stroll through the gardens of China's first official Buddhist temple, and get a taste of the delicious and elaborate Luoyang Water Banquet. Just outside Luoyang, about 12 kilometers to the east, lies another bastion of ancient Chinese belief. More than 2,000 years ago, the first official Buddhist temple was built here in Luoyang. And after all this time, it still stands, a thriving temple of prayer and learning, and an icon of the beginning of Chinese Buddhism. Bai Ma Tzu, or White Horse Temple, was established in 68 AD by the Eastern Han Dynasty Emperor Ming. According to the legend, the emperor had a vision of a Buddha, and afterwards sent two messengers to the West to bring Buddhism back to China. The emissaries returned with two monks from India and two white horses carrying Buddhist writings and relics on their backs. To express his gratitude, the emperor built this temple, and although small compared to others around the country, Bai Ma Tzu's status as the cradle of Chinese Buddhism is unrivaled. Because it's so well known, many devotees flock here and can even lunch with the masters. I'm honored to have the chance to meet senior monk Master Qing Yun. He's an example of modern monkhood, holding a master's degree in Buddhism and taking up a very prestigious position while still quite young, only in his 40s. Uh, here, the the in the course of many centuries, Bai Matsu hosted numerous monks from ancient India many of whom helped to popularize Buddhism in Luoyang and eventually spread the faith throughout China and further afield to Korea, Japan and Vietnam. Much of what can be seen today was rebuilt during the Ming Dynasty around 500 years ago. But the temple's heyday was during the Tang era, specifically the time of Wu Zetian. She expanded the original grounds and at its height, the temple was home to around 3,000 monks. Now, Unlike the devoted believers who regularly visit the temple, we're not allowed to stay for lunch. So, we head back to the city to check out another iconic Luoyang establishment, albeit a less sacred one. The most famous food to have here in Luoyang is called Shui Xi, and here we are at the most famous place for desert. Restaurant Zhen Butong specializes in Shui Xi, which translates as water banquet. Hey, what a welcome. The meal comprises 24 dishes served in a particular order, one after the other like flowing water, hence the name. It originated during the Tang Dynasty and was a favorite of Wu Zetian. The sweet, Salty and sour, soupy dishes perfectly suit Luoyang's dry climate, and each has a particular meaning, which Chef Li Yubin helps to explain. This is This 这个就是无荒,就是命于出,把这个小兵做成这个七字的形状,一共与王公大臣们随时娱乐使用。
呃，古代有句有个诗，就是专门写了一首诗，就是赞美这个菜的。大家可以看一下，这个菜呢，木乃烟菜，也是水溪中的一道比较特别的大菜。这个就是牡丹花的造型。这个菜有一个传说，就是武则天在品尝后，感觉就说是有大有这个燕窝的风味。大家可以品尝一下。啊。Well, we're going to start, and I know which one I'm going to try first. Mmm. 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 It has some soup in it, so it has a bit of a sour taste. It's very light and refreshing, and the way that the radish is prepared makes it very fluffy and very pleasant、um, in your mouth. Shui Xi is considered one of the three wonders of Luoyang, and has been served to important visitors to the city for centuries. Henan is one of China's biggest agricultural provinces and produces a lot of flour. This is perhaps the reason why heavy and saucy dishes are favored by locals. After the meal, I'm invited into the kitchen to learn how my favorite of the dishes is made. Me, cake to the chopping board. Now this will be interesting. Ah, 你好，这是啥？啊，这个是衣服，东方的衣服。工作服。好了 ，Well, I'm gonna as well look the part if I'm gonna cook the part. 谢谢。好了。How do I look? Right. Got it. Ah. So you have to cut it so finely that you should be able to see the the little marks in it. It's almost transparent, kind of like paper. So you have to actually cut it into really, really thin slices, and this will give it that fluffy, light texture that really makes the the soup so delicious and so appealing. You know, when I first tasted it, I thought it was grated, but actually, it's chopped very finely and very skillfully. Mmm. So I think putting it in the water will make it sort of absorb some more of that liquid and make it even fluffier. 要不要试一下？要。我先把它修一下啊。Actually, gonna let me try. 慢点，慢点，小心手指头。好，推，往前推，推。I'm not the type to back down from a challenge, but this is a little over my head. <laughs> 好了。这个是绿豆淀粉。I just managed. And hey, a little better than I thought. Oh, it's hot. Maybe much better. His presentation is elegant and symmetrical. Mine, not so much. Still, I'm pretty excited. Hooray! Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? You know, it's it's not as delicate, but whatever. I'm gonna taste it.、Mm. Okay, very excited. I think that means it's awesome. Oh, I was so proud of this. Really, I think I've met accidentally stumbled across a new kind of shrimp. Oh, I think it's really good. Wait, seriously, 
I think that may have cooking or something. But I think there's lots of different dishes that I could try. It's like, um, what's that, the lamb dish and, uh, oh, wait, you know, the, where are you going? Up next on Travelog, we get a behind-the-scenes look at the colorful world of Henan Opera and escape the summer heat on one of Luoyang's most scenic walking trails. While driving through the outskirts of Luoyang, we get wind of a traditional performance taking place in one of the villages. We pull over and discover that a yuju, or Henan Opera, is about to take place. So the performance is about to start and we're going to head backstage to get a bit of an insider look at what's happening behind the scenes. Apparently, the performers are all part of a special troupe called Song Xi Xia Xiang, which literally means to send opera down to the villages. Sponsored by the provincial government, they travel and perform throughout rural Henan. I meet passionate performer Zhu Mangwan, who invites me to give it a go. Okay, well she's going to put some um, makeup on me and teach me a little bit of um, Yuju, so um, let's go. The makeup is quickly piled on and feels a bit gooey on my face. This is what uh, women wear just before they get married. Now that I sort of look the part, she teaches me how to sort of act it, too. Traditional opera uses many movements and gestures to tell the story, and Ju Mengwan demonstrates a crucial one. Oh, she's teaching me what to do if I'm very, very sad and I'm going to basically take off. Blockbuster movies may have overtaken operas as a form of mainstream entertainment, but only decades ago these young men and women might have been considered megastars. To the untrained eye, it may seem just like Peking opera, but Yu Ju is quite different from the operas performed in other provinces. The stories mirror the lives of ordinary people. With its strong use of rhythms and colloquial language, Yuju is said to reflect the nature of Hainan people, outspoken, down-to-earth, and having a good sense of humor. And mainstream or not, this devoted crowd certainly appreciates it. You know, I've always had a little bit of a, a thing for performing on stage. Never did anything about it, though, but... Oh, how I wish one day I could join them. But, sadly, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Luoyang is not just about culture. There's also a lot of natural scenery to enjoy as well. And this is some of the best. Well, it's a hot sunny day, but I'm still in the mood to enjoy the great outdoors. Hopefully without coping with the sun, and I've been told that this is the place to do it. This is called Long San Da Xiaogu, which means Dragon Pool Valley. And if we go inside, well, you'll see what I mean. While temperatures soar above 35 degrees outside, in here, it's very cool and comfortable. No wonder the locals love visiting during weekends and holidays. Winding walking trails lead you through the narrow gorge, past a waterfall, and dark, quiet crevices. It's the perfect place to get a sense of Hernan's natural environment with its dry, rocky terrain and mountainous landscape.
know, we see some pretty ancient things here in Moyon so far, but this, this is something else. This is millions of years old, except back then, where I'm standing, it was in the bottom of the ocean. Pretty mind blowing. And as with almost all things in Luoyang, there's more to it than meets the eye. This ravine not only has a fascinating geological story, it's also filled with old tales, pagan fables, as well as Buddhist legends. Mysteries are everywhere. For example, if you look over here, you have this really cool effect. Looking at the rocks from where I'm standing, it actually looks like the water is flowing upwards. But in fact, your eyes are lying to you. It's just because of the way the rock is angled, the formation of it, that it seems that way. But really, it's flowing that way, like usual. Pretty cool trick, anyway. The 12 kilometer valley was formed by flowing water over millions of years. Along the way, in the various layers and colors of the rocks, you can observe the different stages of the mountain's evolution from the ancient past to the present. Well, I can see just around the corner this path is coming to an end, and sadly, so is this episode. You know, we've come to Loyang and experienced so many things which are key to Chinese history and culture, but in this city, they aren't just confined somewhere to some dusty corner. They're alive and well for people to engage with and learn from. And coming to Loyang, I really get that wonderful sense that people will continue to come and do those things for hundreds and thousands of years to come. I'm Petunia. Thank you for joining us in Travelog, and we'll see you next time.